What's going on internet? IG back again today and I am looking at, uh, to me, probably one of the most interesting and I dare say delightful uh, distributions that I've looked at in quite a while and that is uh, Pop OS by System76. So this is a distribution that uh, that uh, kind of was raised to the top of my priority list after uh, digging into uh, GNOME and um, and obviously I've done a couple of videos on GNOME already so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about GNOME as a desktop environment um, but uh, but I was uh, running OpenSUSE Leap 15 before and I used the GNOME desktop on that as well as the KDE desktop to, to make a couple of videos and, um, and uh, so basically through a long process of trial and error um, I've got Pop! OS running as the, the one and only uh, distribution on this laptop right now which is the main uh, the main workhorse that does all of the the heavy lifting for this channel, and uh, and the reason that I chose to do that was was a couple of reasons, and I'm going to get into that as the video progresses. But for right now, let's just talk about uh, Pop OS as a distribution. So Pop OS 18.04. Okay, so Pop! OS as a, uh, as a distribution, again, you can probably find plenty of uh, videos on YouTube about this distribution and, and what it brings to the table. But uh, in essence, uh, Pop! OS is uh, designed by System76 for, uh, for their line of hardware. And I guess um, in a lot of ways, they're kind of emulating uh, the sort of uh, user experience uh, design that they want to do, very similar in the way that um, a company like Apple would do it, in they, that they control the hardware, they control uh, the software, and, uh, and so they want to be able to create a very streamlined uh, OS for their hardware. Now, of course, their hardware is built on open source tools and it's, and it's free software, so they, of course, make it available for everybody else to download and run as well. Now, there's some very specific things that, um, that really spoke to me with this, uh, with this distribution first up, um, just when I was first looking into it, and that is uh, a, a very clear sense of design. Now, again, we already have well established the fact that GNOME as a desktop environment has a very clear sense of design. Whether you agree with it or not depends on what kind of person you are. But um, add to that very clear vision of what user experience should be. You've got System76 that have a very distinct look and feel about them and then they apply that same look and feel including the fonts, um, the, uh, the different color themes, icons and that kind of thing to the, to the top layer of, uh, of Pop! OS. Now, I'm sure the question you're asking is, well, if it's only the GNOME desktop with a with a different theme on it, why does that justify making a whole other distribution? And uh, and I get that absolutely, um, but I think as time has gone on and I've kind of played around with this distribution more, they've sort of made some very key um, they've made some very key decisions that kind of set this apart as uh, as a slightly different version of uh, of the GNOME desktop. And, uh, and some of the key things that for me that it boils down to is that they take the whole keyboard driven interface thing to, to a new level in that their keyboard navigation and how their keyboard shortcuts are designed, they actually are work a little bit differently to, um, to the typical uh, keyboard layouts of GNOME. And, uh, and for me, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, the fact that the, the, the global keyboard shortcuts of the entire distribution are mapped around the, the meta key or the Windows key. And then you can use the meta key arrow up, arrow down to swap, uh, to swap between workspaces. And as I explained in my GNOME 3, in defense of GNOME 3, um, keyboard driven interfaces is actually really key to how GNOME works. And for me, the fact that they simplify the keyboard shortcuts, and there's actually a whole list of them that, um, that I probably should find here. They've globally customized enough of these keyboard shortcuts that it makes navigating the system and navigating the windows a lot easier to pick up on than, uh, than the default ones that come part of GNOME. And, uh, and of course you can do this yourself, but the fact that it's done out of the box and especially to suit the hardware that they have available is, uh, I think that's a great uh, I think that's a great addition. Um, you can see they've got keyboard shortcuts sort of all surrounding that super key um, customized to their own uh, to their own use case. One thing that I really appreciate is the uh, is the power management tools that they give you. Um, they've got a few tools baked right in. So first of all, they have in the uh, in the top system tray here, they have your battery monitor, and they give you a couple of different profiles to choose from that um, that are built into the system, baked in. 
and uh, and they in concert with programs like TLP and PowerTop um, these can help uh, get you better battery life if you're running on a laptop and also probably the more interesting and kind of frustrating part of it is the whole Nvidia Optimus uh, drivers now this one I've actually needed quite a bit of clarification on and uh, and so I managed to, uh, through Twitter, I managed to get some clarification about how this works. Um, but basically System76 have designed their own um, power management tool set, which also manages the graphics cards in the same way that, uh, that Nvidia's Prime Select tool does. Now, I could do a whole separate video on this and I'm not going to because it doesn't apply to everyone, but um, basically, the, the, all of the graphic switching is handled straight out of the box in the system. So uh, you can see here in the, in the system menu here on the right hand side, I can choose between Nvidia and Intel and all I need to do is, uh, is obviously restart the machine. Now, what this does mean is that your, your um, sort of legacy bumblebee approach to switching between graphics cards is not available. You have to physically go into uh, your package manager and remove all of the System76 and Nvidia stuff and then reinstall Bumblebee and Nvidia drivers from Ubuntu's repositories in order to get this to work properly. Um, so that is, uh, like I said, that's got positives and negatives to it. On the positive side, you do have an element of, uh, of intelligent um, graphics card management built into the system, which is great. I actually appreciate that. But at the same time, uh, if you want to actually tweak anything, a lot of the tweaks that work for people on Manjaro or on Linux Mint or even mainline Ubuntu aren't going to work here because this distribution is using completely different power management tools when it comes to these cards. So for example, I was getting this weird thing where uh, the NVIDIA card was was switched off as far as the system could see, but I could still hear the fan constantly going. So it required that plus TLP plus PowerTop to finally bring those fans down. Um, but it took a lot more tweaking than it needed to because of the fact they're using custom tools. But the fact that it's available out of the box, yes, you have to require a restart, which is uh, it seems like a bit of a regression to what um, Bumblebee could provide. But again, progress marches on and we might get back there eventually. Okay, that's enough about that. Overall though, I think the fact that they take um, battery life optimizations and the fact that they take uh, switchable graphics into account when creating an operating system and, uh, and that right out of the gate when you download the system, you can download an Nvidia version and an Intel AMD version those are two very good things. So when it comes to what they're shooting for in this distribution, they obviously wanna create a, uh, a system that works well for their target user base. Um, and that is uh, people that enjoy using Linux that are wanting to um, develop or uh, use the tools that are very unique to Linux to be able to build stuff, whatever that looks like. Um, and, uh, and so for that, I think they achieve their vision pretty well. Um, in terms of GNOME as a keyboard driven interface, I'm actually really starting to understand it, get my head around it and kind of starting to enjoy it now. Um, and the fact that the GNOME desktop comes bundled in such a way where everything just looks so good, like the, the typography and the icons and the, the window borders and everything like the wallpapers, the splash screens and all of that kind of stuff all work so well together that it's, it's almost a delightful uh, user interface to uh, to see every day. It kind of makes you want to get in and use your computer. And I know that sounds kind of shallow and, and whatever, but it does make a difference. And especially when it comes to first impressions, um, this is the kind of thing that would make, a, that would, in my opinion, would make a developer kind of sit up and take notice of, of an operating system like this. The fact that it's designed to complement System76's hardware is uh, it's good to see. But uh, but the tweaks that they make, there are enough here that it makes uh, it makes a lot more sense uh, to what you would want out of a system. Um, but at the same time, they don't go overboard to the fact where it uh, it seems bloated or that there's duplicated um, functionality here. Now, there's one other key distinction that I want to make, and that is the difference between a distribution being light and fast and feeling light and fast. And um, because this is a common contention with uh, with GNOME as a as an as an operating environment, is that it's pretty heavy on resources and it, and it can get pretty sluggish. Now, in my experience, and we're running a couple of things here in the background, so let's 
let's just jump into the system monitor and uh, I've got kind of video editor open and uh, the screen recorder and some other things. I'm using almost half my RAM at the moment, which is very thirsty. Um, and even when I'm not running anything, I'm still running at about two gig of RAM and uh, which is a pretty obscene amount of RAM. But having said that, uh, never in, in, um, in my use of this system has it ever felt like it's been slow. Apps have been snappy to load. I haven't been sitting around waiting for anything. And when you're um, when you're really getting into the flow or the workflow of being able to jump around with keyboard shortcuts and be jumping between the different things that you're doing. Um, at one point, you know, I, I had uh, I had Firefox and and GIMP and Caden Live and um, and a few different things all going on different workspaces. And at no point did it feel like it was slowing down or bogging down. And uh, and for me, this was key. Um, because absolutely looking at these figures, you're like, that's so inefficient. I could do that with half that amount of RAM and I'd have so many more system resources to spare. Well, at no point, I feel like these system resources, while it's chewing through a lot, I feel like it's being put to good use. I'm not sitting around left waiting for anything. So really, do I notice the difference? No, I don't. Whether it's using four gig or two gig or whatever, um, I've got eight gigs of RAM there. I may as well use them. So this is pretty much fully tricked out in terms of uh, what I need out of it. And as you can see, I'm not changing the default look and feel or anything like that because I like it. Um, and I've got the apps uh, installed on here that I want. Things seem to be running pretty smoothly right now. Um, the only issue I'm encountering is Bluetooth stuff, but I'm pretty sure that's got to do with power management uh, side of things anyway. Um, and uh, in conclusion, if you're after a very keyboard driven uh, interface that appeals to, I guess, a, uh, a modern, and I'm using air quotes, a modern sense of, uh, you know, very flat design, bright colors, that kind of thing, then, uh, then this is definitely a distribution worth looking into. When it comes to um, software management, they've got their own custom uh, pop shop, which in, in a lot of ways is a custom version of the elementary app store. Um, and uh, it doesn't have access to a lot of the elementary, uh, the elementary, you know, uh, repositories of software. Um, it just has your standard kind of Ubuntu repositories there, which is fine. Apart from those things, there's not a whole lot else to report back on. Um, I love the selection of wallpapers that they give you and their sense of, like I've already said, um, design in terms of what they include and the, the default kind of look and feel and the wallpapers and all that kind of thing are great. Um, and uh, apart from their custom power management tools, custom graphics card management, um, custom keyboard shortcuts, slightly optimized uh, search and that kind of thing. Apart from those things, it, it's pretty stock standard GNOME, but it's, it's polished to a level where uh, I think it shines a lot stronger than what you would see out of the box with something like Fedora. Um, and I think for me, that's almost enough. Um, and uh, so we're going to keep using this as the primary, uh, as the go-to OS for the next uh, little while and um, see how we go with it. Well, that'll be all from me. If you uh, want to kind of dig into GNOME 3 a little bit more and you haven't seen the videos that I've made on that, then uh, I'll link those in the cards. And apart from that, I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.